So I just uh, had a quick coconut water and now I'm back here and our instances are running. They don't usually take that long to get started here. And so uh, we probably should have named these to make it a little bit easier. So we need to uh, determine which is our public and private. And you can see right away, this one has a public um, uh, a public DNS host name and also it has its uh, IP, IP address, okay? So this is how we know this is the public one. So I'm just gonna say uh, Bajor public, okay? And this one here is definitely the private one, all right? So we will say a Bajor uh, private, okay? So um, yeah, and just to iterate over here, if you were to look here, you can see we have the DNS and the public IP address. And then for the private, uh, there's nothing set, okay? So um, let's go see if our website is working here. So I'm just gonna copy the public IP address or we can take the DNS one, it doesn't matter. And we will uh, paste this in a new tab. And here we have our working uh, website. So our public IP address is definitely working. Now, if we were to check our private one, there is nothing there. So there's nothing for us to copy. We can't even copy this private one and paste it in here. So there's no way of accessing that website is, that is running on the uh, private uh, one there. And it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to run your, uh, your website um, in the private subnet there. Um, so, you know, just to make a very clear example of that. Now um, that we have these two instances, I guess it's a good opportunity to learn about security groups, okay? So we had created a security group and the reason why we were able to access um, uh, this uh, instance publicly was that in our security group, we had an inbound rule on port 80. So port 80 is what websites run on and when we're accessing through the web browser there and we are allowing my IP here um, so that's why I was allowed to access it. So I just wanna to illustrate to you what happens if I change my IP. So at the top here, I have a VPN. It's a, it's a service you can, you can buy. A lot of people use it so that they can watch Netflix in other regions. Uh, I use it for uh, this purpose, not to uh, watch Netflix somewhere else. Uh, so, uh, so don't get that in your mind there. But um, I'm just gonna turn it on and I'm going to uh, change my IP so I get, I think it's, this is Brazil. And so I'm gonna have an IP from Brazil here shortly once it connects. And so now if I were to go and access this here, um, it shouldn't work, okay? So I'm just going to close that tab here and it should just hang, okay? So it's hanging because um, I'm not using that IP. So that's uh, how security groups work, okay? And so I'm just gonna turn that off and I think I should have the same one and it should resolve instantly there, so great. So just showing you how um, the security groups work for uh, inbound rules, okay? For outbound rules, that's traffic going out to the internet. It's almost always open like this, 0.0.0.0, uh, .0 .0 .0, right? Because you just want to be able to download stuff or et cetera. So that is a pretty normal business, okay? So um, now that uh, now that we can see that, um, maybe we would like to show off how knackles work compared to security groups. So security groups, um, as you can see, if we were just to open this one up here, okay. Um, security groups um, by default um, only can allow things. So everything is uh, denied and then you're always opening things up. So you're adding allow rules only. You can't add an explicit deny rule. So where knuckles are uh, very useful is that you can uh, use it to block very specific IP addresses, okay? Or IP ranges, if you will. Uh, and you cannot do that for a security group because how would you go about doing that? So if I wanted to block access just to my IP address, uh, I guess I could only allow every other IP address in the world except for mine, but you can see how that would do undue burden. So let's see if we can uh, set our knackle um, to just block our IP address here, okay? So um, security groups are associated with the actual EC2 um, instances. Or, uh, so the question is, is that um, how do we uh, figure out the knackles? And knackles are associated with the subnets, okay? So in order to block our IP address for this EC2 instance, we have to uh, determine what subnet it runs in. And so it runs in our um, Bajor public A, right? And so now we gotta find the knackle that's associated with it. So going up here to subnets, I'm gonna go to public A and I'm gonna see what knackles are associated with it. And so it is this knackle here, and we have some rules that we can change. So let's actually try uh, just blocking my IP address here, and we will go just grab it from here, okay? All right, uh, and just to note, um, if you look here, um, see how it says forward slash 32, that is, that's a CIDR block range of exactly one IP address. So that's how you specify a single IP address with forward slash 32. Um, but I'm gonna go here and just edit the uh, knackle here and we are going to, uh, 
this is not the best way to do it. So I'm just going to open it here. Okay. And because uh, I didn't get some edit options there, I don't know why. Um, and so we'll just go up to inbound rules here. I'm going to add a new rule and it goes from uh, lowest to highest for these rules. Um, so I'm just going to add a new rule here and um, I'm going to put in rule 10. Okay, and I'm going to uh, lock it here on uh, the side of range, and I'm going to do it for port 80. Okay, so this, and we're going to have an explicit deny. Okay, so this should um, this should uh, not allow me to access that EC2 instance any any longer. Okay, so we're going to go back to our instances here. We're going to grab that IP address there and paste it in there and see if I still have access. And I do not. Okay. So that knackle is now blocking it. So that's how you block uh, individual IP addresses there. And I'm just going to go back and now edit the uh, rule here. And so we're just going to remove uh, this rule and hit save. And then we're going to go back here and hit refresh. Okay. And I should now have access and I do. So there you go. So that is security groups and knackle. So I guess the next thing we can move on to is, um, uh, how do we actually uh, get access to the private subnet? Okay, and the and the the ways around that. We have um, our, our private uh, EC2 instance, and we don't have an IP address, so there's no direct way to gain access to it. So we can't just uh, easily SSH into it. So this is where we're going to need um, a bastion. Okay, and so we're going to go ahead and go set one up here. Um, so what I want you to do is I want you to uh, launch a, uh, a new instance here. I'm just going to open a new tab just in case I want this old tab here. Um, and I'm just going to hit a launch instance here. Okay. And so I'm going to go to the uh, marketplace here. I'm going to just type in Bastion. And so we have some options here. There is this free one, Bastion Host uh, SSH, but I'm going to be using Guacamole. And there is an associated cost here with it. Uh, they do have a trial version. So you can get away with not paying uh, anything for it. So I'm just going to proceed and select uh, guacamole. And anytime you're using something from the marketplace, they generally will have the instructions in here. So if you do view additional uh, details here, uh, we're going to get some uh, extra information. And then we would just scroll down here to uh, usage information, such as uh, usage instructions. And we're going to see there is uh, more information. I'm just going to open up this tab here because I've done this a few times. So I remember where all this stuff is. Okay, and we're just going to hit continue here. Okay, and we're going to start setting up this instance. So we're going to need a, uh, a small. Uh, so this one doesn't allow you to go into micros. Okay, so there is an associated cost there. We're going to configure this instance. We're going to want it in the uh, same VPC as our private. Okay, uh, when we have to launch this in a public subnet. So just make sure that you select the public one here. Okay. And uh, we're going to uh, need to create a new IAM role. And this is part of Guacamole's instructions here because you need to give it some access so that it can auto discover instances, okay? And so down here, they have the instructions here and they're just gonna tell you to make an IAM role. We could launch a CloudFormation template to make this, but I would rather just make it by hand here. So we're gonna grab uh, this uh, policy here, okay? Um, and we are going to uh, make a new tab and make our way over to IAM. Okay, and uh, once we're in IAM here, we're gonna have to make this policy. So I'm gonna make this policy, okay, unless I already have it. Let's just see if it's already in here. No, okay, good. And I'm gonna go to JSON, paste that in there, review the policy. I'm gonna name it. They have a suggestion here what to name it, uh, Guac AWS, that seems fine to me. Okay, and here you can see it's gonna give us permissions to CloudWatch and STS. So we'll go ahead and create that policy. It says it already exists. So um, I already have it. So just go ahead and create that policy. And I'm just going to uh, skip the step for myself. Okay. Um, and we're just going to hit cancel there. So I'm just going to type guac. I don't know why it's not showing up. It says it already exists. Um, okay, I'll just type that in again. So yeah, there it is. So I already have that policy. Okay. So I couldn't hit that last step, but you'll be able to get through that no problem. And then once you have it, you're going to have to create a new role. So we're going to create a role here and it's going to be for EC2. We're going to go next and uh, we're going to want, I believe, EC2 full access. Is that the right? Oh, read only access. Okay. So we're going to want to give this EC2 read only access. And we're also going to want to give it that new guac role. So I'm going to type in, I'll type AWS here. Oh, that's giving me a hard time here. We'll just copy and paste the whole name in here. There it is. And so those are the two uh, two policies you need to have attached. And then we're just going to name this uh, something here. So I'm going to just call it my guac uh, bastion. 
Okay, roll here. And we're gonna create that roll. Okay, and so that roll has now been created. We're gonna go back here, refresh the IM rolls, and we're gonna see if it exists. And there it is, my Glock Bastion roll. I might have spelled Bastion wrong there, but I don't think that really matters. And then we will uh, go to storage. Uh, there's nothing to do here. We'll skip tags. We'll go to security groups. And here you can see it comes with some uh, default configurations. So we're gonna leave those alone. And then we're going to launch uh, this EC2 instance, okay? So um, now we're launching that, uh, it's taking a bit of time here, but this is going to launch. And as soon as this is done, um, we're gonna come back here and uh, uh, acts, uh, start using this Bastion to get into um, our private instance. So our Bastion here is now uh, ready and provisioned. So let's go ahead and just type in Bastion so we don't make, uh, lose that later on. Uh, we can go grab either the DNS or public IP. I'll just grab the DNS one here. And uh, we're gonna get this connection, not private warning. That's fine because we're definitely not using um, SSL here. So just hit advance and then just click uh, to proceed here. Okay, and then it might ask you to allow. We're going to definitely say allow for that because that's more of uh, the advanced functionality of guacamole there, which we might touch in at the end of this here. We're going to need the username and password. So it has a default. So we have guac admin here. Okay, and then the password is going to be um, the name of the instance ID. All right, and this is all in the instructions here. I'm just speeding you through it. And then we're going to hit login here. And so now um, it has auto discovered the instances which are in uh, the VPC that it has launched. And so here we have uh, Bezier Private. So let's uh, go ahead and try to connect to it. Okay. So as soon as I click, it's going to make this uh, shell here. And so we'll go attempt and log in now. So our user is EC2 uh, user. And I believe our password is K A I W I N N, Kai Win. And we are in our instance, so there you go. That's how we gain access to our um, private instance here. Uh, just before we start doing uh, some other things within this um, private EC2, I just wanna to touch on some of the functionality of Bastion here, uh, or sorry, Guacamole, and so why you might actually want to use a Bastion. So it does. Uh, it is a hardened instance. Um, it does allow you to authenticate via a multiple methods, so you can uh, enable multi-factor authentication to use this. Um, it also has the ability to do screen recording so you can really be sure what people are up to. Okay, and then it just has built in audit logs and et cetera, et cetera. So there's definitely some uh, good reasons to use a Bastion, but we can also use a uh, Sessions Manager, which does a lot of this for us with the exception of uh, screen recording within, the, um, within AWS. But anyway, so now that we're in our instance, let's uh, go play around here and see what we can do.